Pastor John, here's a big question we get frequently from listeners, and it comes in various forms, but essentially the question is this. Is there such a thing as free will? Um, let me pose the question really specifically so that it's not maybe quite that broad, but I think we'll go right to the heart of the matter. Do we have free will in choosing Christ as our Lord and Savior and treasure? I think that's what the center of the debate is about. And then people can generalize beyond that about, like, do you have free will to eat eat a banana? But I, I'm I'm just talking about, do we have free will to to choose Christ as our Savior, our Lord, our treasure. And of course, that depends on the definition of free will. So let's start with one. And I think this is the a definition that those in the debate would agree with. I know that in my debates with Greg Boyd, for example, he's he would use this for what he's defending people ha- having, and I think people don't have in this regard. So here, You have a free will, this is the definition, you have a free will when you have ultimate self-determination. With this definition, you have free will in choosing Christ if the ultimate cause of the choice is your own self-determination. So so the the point is the word ultimate. There may be a lot of factors that that share in determining your choice of Christ. But only one of those factors is ultimate or final. Uh, Free will, on this definition, demands that you be that factor, not anything else and including God. God's not the final, ultimate factor in the choice you are. Or here's another way to say it. You have free will when your will is the decisive cause of your choosing Christ. And the word decisive here has the same function as ultimate. There may be many causes that influence your choosing Christ, but for you to be free, in this definition, the decisive cause, uh, the one that finally decides your choice, must be your will, not anyone else's will, including God. So that's what the debate is about. Uh, When you get to heaven, if God asks you, what's the deepest decisive reason you believed on my son? What will your answer be? Will you say, the decisive reason for my choice was your grace? Or will you say, the decisive reason for my choice was me? Now, be sure. To, to, to notice carefully, the question is not, did we make a choice? The question was not, was our will active and necessary? The question was not, was our choice real? The answer to all those questions is yes, you made a choice. Your will was active and necessary. Your choice was real. That's not the question in the debate. The question is, when your will chose, what was decisive in bringing that willing about? What was the decisive influence or the decisive cause? And the Bible answers God's grace, and others say your own power of self-determination. So I'm arguing here now that in choosing Christ, we don't have that kind of free will. That is the power of self-determination. And, and here are three kinds of texts that I would commend for people to think about. Number one, we are so morally corrupt we can't do good. We can't believe. Romans 8, 6 and 7. To set the mind on the flesh, or the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, and it cannot. So the mind of the flesh, apart from Jesus Christ, cannot submit to God. We love our self-exaltation and cannot submit. Or 1 Corinthians 2.14, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit, for they are folly to him, and he's not able. He's not able. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So these texts in the Bible says we cannot perceive and submit to God because we are so corrupt. Number two, we, we can't choose Christ. It's finally a gift of God. So 2 Timothy 2.24, 
The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance. So repentance is required, and we can't do it on our own. The decisive cause is God may grant repentance. Or Philippians 1.29 for it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but suffer for his sake. So believing in Christ is a gift. It's granted to you because you can't produce it on your own. So Paul says, so then it depends not on the one who wills or the one who runs, but on God who has mercy. And the third uh, text type is, what is this experience like then when we choose by another's power. 1 Corinthians 15.10, by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. But on the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was with me. So there's a picture of I do choose, I do work, I am laboring, but no, it is God at work in me. He's the decisive underneath cause bringing it about. Same thing in Philippians 2.12, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for God is the one who's in you working and in you willing. So your willing is caused by his willing and your working is caused by his working. So here's my conclusion, Tony. If we If we are left to our free will, that is our power of ultimate self-determination, we will, all of us, use it to reject Christ. We are so spiritually dead and numb and blind and rebellious against Christ. We love the darkness so much that we don't have the moral ability to see and prize and choose Christ over this world. The sovereign grace of God breaks in on our lives, overcomes our rebellion, overcomes our blindness and our deadness, and makes us able to see Christ as compelling and beautiful so that we freely choose Christ, which, which of course, I know leaves unanswered the question of, well, then how in the world are, are we accountable or responsible? But, but on, on, on this APJ, I just wanted to say no. We don't have free will in choosing Christ if you define free will as ultimate uh, self-determination. Thank you, Pastor John. Yes, so are we responsible or accountable then? We'll be back tomorrow to address that question. Until then, I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening.